Hello friends, I'm very pleased to be here with you at the Gold Conference. My name is Hugo Salinas Price and I'm in Mexico City and I'm here by invitation of Bill Murphy and I thank him very much for the honor and for allowing me to make a presentation to tell you about what's been going on with silver here in Mexico City and Mexico in general. Well, let me start by making reference to the first book I ever owned, and I was not able to read it yet. I was too young. It's The Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum. That was my first book, and I still own it. And it was read to me at my bedside every night, chapter by chapter, and those were thrilling moments for me. And only when I became an old man did I realize that Frank Baum was talking about silver and the meaning of his book. Of course, he does it, it's not strictly a, a, uh, an allegory, but it has too many, too many references uh, to monetary problems which are with us today to, be, to, to ignore that, uh, what was on Baum's mind when he wrote that book. As you know, Dorothy, uh, when she arrived in the land of Oz, taken there by a whirlwind, finds herself the owner of a pair of silver shoes. Yes, they were silver. In the movie, that wonderful 1939 movie, which I loved so much, uh, Dorothy was given uh, ruby-colored shoes because they went better with the technicolor in the film. But in the book, they were silver shoes. And clicking the heels of the silver shoes uh, granted Dorothy up to three wishes. And what, do, what, does, what was Baum thinking about? We must speculate with the silver shoes on Dorothy's feet. First of all, Dorothy for me represents the mass of American householders, a great portion of which lived on farms. And the silver shoes mean nothing else than the granting of the wishes of the great mass of Americans who lived on the land and the, the middle class of America. And he develops this story uh, by having Dorothy march along the yellow brick road. The yellow brick road must refer to gold bars, but the gold bars must be traveled with silver shoes. That is very significant. When Dorothy arrives at the Emerald City, she finds uh, that everybody there must wear green glasses to see everything in green color and think that everything is made of emerald. Uh, well, we can interpret this as meaning that everyone must see things rosy colored or green colored, which is another uh, color for hope, green. And who is the master of the Emerald City? Why, the, the wonderful wizard. Well, today's wizard, I need not tell you who today's wizard is. He's a, a little bald man with a beard. So, Baum's tale is uh, really uh, transcends his time. It was written in 1900. And his message for today is the message I want to pass on to you, that the road we must travel to gold or on gold must be with silver. Because, you see, silver has always been the money of the people. Gold was hardly ever used by people in their day-to-day -day affairs. I'd say never. Gold was very rarely seen by the average American. My mother, who died a few years ago and was born in 1910, I don't think she ever she could never recall having seen a gold coin in the United States during her youth. Uh, she lived in the United States until 1931 when she married my father who was a Mexican and came to live in Mexico. So silver is the money of the people and has been the money of the people for thousands and thousands of years. 
Gold has been the money of kings and very wealthy people, of aristocrats, of the, of the powerful. But the people have always used silver. And I think that a return to a more reasonable monetary uh, setup in the world today, which is in a terrible mess, if we ever see any, any improvement, I think it's got to be through silver. Silver was the first to come out of circulation way back in about 1871 or 1873. It was demonetized and progressively lost value with regard to gold. And I think that in order to return to a more stable monetary system in the world, the people must have silver first. First out, first back in. And that is what I've been doing, trying to achieve here in Mexico. And perhaps, perhaps we shall have some success if, if we are successful in reintroducing silver into circulation in Mexico, it will done, be done by a method which I will explain to you. And there is a chance that it may happen. Maybe, maybe the chance is one in a million. I always remember the words of uh, James Carey in Dumb and Dumber. Well, I have a chance, it's one in a million, but it's a chance. So I'm optimistic, or, or I try to be optimistic and, and between times when I feel so down that we might be able to achieve this wonderful thing to have silver back in circulation along with paper money. Now you see, if we're going to have silver circulating again, it cannot be with money that bears an engraved value. A money with an engraved value, a silver money with an engraved value today is something which is uh, obsolete. It just can't be done on any permanent basis. Silver went out of circulation all over the world for the same reasons that it went out of circulation here in Mexico. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> 